Chapter Twenty Four of Among the Meadow People. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Lynn Thompson. Among the Meadow People by Clara Dillingham Pearson. Chapter Twenty Four. The Frog Hoppers Go Out into the World. Along the upper edge of the meadow and in the corners of the rail fence there grew goldenrod During the spring and early summer you could hardly tell that it was there unless you walked close to it and Saw the slender and graceful stalks pushing upward through the tall grass and pointing in many different ways with their dainty leaves The horses and cows knew it and although they might eat all around it They never pulled at it with their lips or ate it in the autumn each stalk was crowned with sprays of tiny bright yellow blossoms Which nodded in the wind and scattered their golden pollen all around Then it sometimes happened that people who were driving past would stop climb over the fence and pluck some of it to carry away Even then there was so much left that one could hardly miss the stalks that were gone It may have been because the goldenrod was such a safe home that most of the frog hoppers laid their eggs there Some laid eggs in other plants and bushes, but most of them chose the goldenrod After they had laid their eggs they wandered around on the grass the bushes and the few trees which grew in the meadow Hopping from one place to another and eating a little here and a little there Nobody knows why they should have been called frog hoppers unless it was because when you look them in the face they seem a very little like tiny frogs to be sure they have six legs and teeth on the front pair as no real frog ever thought of having Perhaps it was only a nickname because their own name was so long and hard to speak The goldenrod was beginning to show small yellow green buds on the tips of its stalks When the little frog hoppers were now old enough to talk and wonder about the great world on one stalk four frog hopper brothers and sisters lived close together That was much pleasanter than having to grow up all alone as Most young frog hoppers do never seeing their fathers and mothers or knowing whether they ever would These four little frog hoppers did not know how lucky they were and That you know happens very often when people have not seen others lonely or unhappy they supposed that every frog hopper family had two brothers and two sisters living together on a goldenrod stalk They fed on the juice or sap of the goldenrod pumping it out of the stalk with their stout little beaks and Eating or drinking it after they had eaten it They made white foam out of it and this foam was all around them on the stalk Anyone passing by could tell at once by the foam just where the frog hoppers lived one morning the oldest frog hopper brother thought that the sap pumped very hard It may be that it did pump hard and it may be that he was tired or lazy Anyway, he began to grumble and find fault This is the worst stalk of goldenrod. I ever saw in my life He said it doesn't pay to try to pump any more sap and I just won't try so there he was quite right in saying that it was the worst stalk he had ever seen because he had never seen any other But he was much mistaken in saying that it didn't pay to pump sap and as for saying that it didn't pay So there we all know that when insects begin to talk in that way The best thing to do is to leave them quite alone until they are better natured The other frog hopper children couldn't leave him alone because they hadn't changed their skins for the last time they had to stay in their foam until that was done After the big brother spoke in this way they all began to wonder if the sap didn't pump hard Before long the big sister wiggled impatiently and said my beak is dreadfully tired Then they all stopped eating and began to talk They called their home stuffy and said there wasn't room to turn around in it without hitting the foam They didn't say why they should mind hitting the foam it was soft and clean and always opened up a way when they pushed against it I Tell you what said the big brother after I've changed my skin once more and gone out into the great world 
you won't catch me hanging around this old goldenrod nor me nor me nor me said the other young frog hoppers i wonder what the world is like said the little sister is it just bigger foam and bigger goldenrod and more frog hoppers huh exclaimed her big brother what lots you know if i didn't know any more than that about it i'd keep still and not tell anybody that made her feel badly and she didn't speak again for a long time then the little brother spoke i didn't know you had ever been out into the world he said no said the big brother i suppose you didn't there are lots of things you don't know that made him feel badly and he went off into the farthest corner of the foam and stuck his head in between a goldenrod leaf and the stalk you see the big brother was very cross indeed he was exceedingly cross for a long time nobody spoke and then the big sister said i wish you would tell us what the world is like the big brother knew no more about the world than the other children but after he had been cross and put on airs he didn't like to tell the truth he might have known that he would be found out yet he held up his head and answered i don't suppose that i can tell you so that you will understand because you have never seen it there are lots of things there whole lots of them and it is very big some of the things are like goldenrod and some of them are not some of them are not even like foam and there are a great many people there they all have six legs but they are not so clever as we are we shall have to tell them things this was very interesting and made the little sister forget to pout and the little brother come out of his foam corner he even looked as though he might ask a few questions. So the big brother added, Now don't talk to me, for I must think about something. It was not long after this that the young frog hoppers changed their skins for the last time. The outside part of the foam hardened and made a little roof over them while they did this. Then they were ready to go out into the meadow. The big brother felt rather uncomfortable, and it was not his new skin which made him so. It was remembering what he had said about the world outside. When they had left their foam and their goldenrod, they had much to see and ask about. Every little while, one of the smaller frog hoppers would exclaim, Why, you never told us about this! Or, Why didn't you tell us about that? Then the big brother would answer, Yes, I did. That is one of the things which I said were not like either goldenrod or foam. For a while they met only crickets, ants, grasshoppers, and other six-legged people, and although they looked at each other, they did not have much to say. At last they hopped near the tree frog, who was sitting by the mossy trunk of a beech tree, and looked so much like the bark that they did not notice him at first. The big brother was very near the tree frog's head. Oh, see, cried the others, there is somebody with only four legs, and he doesn't look as though he ever had any more. Why, brother, what does this mean? You said everybody had six. At this moment, the tree frog opened his eyes a little, and his mouth a great deal, and shot out his quick tongue. When he shut his mouth again, the big brother of the tree hoppers was nowhere to be seen. They never had a chance to ask him that question again. If they had but known it, the tree frog at that minute had ten legs, for six and four are ten. But then they couldn't know it, for six were on the inside. End of chapter 24